We're back, guys. Yeah. Episode two. Episode two from the hiatus. From the hiatus, yes. Yeah. But if you're if you're th- talking about our our catalog, yeah. Chronologically, we're at like this is eighty eight, I believe. Eighty eight, yeah. Wow, that's insane. Do you think it's a coincidence that there's eighty eight keys on the piano? Q just dropped another note. That's a Q bomb, guys. Yeah, definitely not a not a coincidence, or it is a coincidence, or maybe it's fate. Who knows? Yeah, I'm just waiting for the next transmission to tell me what to do. Yeah, we just kind of gonna feel it out, feel see it what out. happens. Comes to you in dreams, I feel like. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, not bad. Eighty eight. Not bad, dude. Uh, in a in a f- like two weeks, three weeks, we're gonna hit three whole years. Well, it's crazy. Yeah, man. We were both... Uh, Our podcast is walking. Saying it's talking, too. Yeah, what can it say? That's pretty apropos, though, that the podcast is talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can a three-year-old say? I'm so bad oh at, my like, God. development stuff. No, Um. so my niece... My, what's a girl? A niece. <laughs> Fucking, I'm, I'm stupid. My niece is, like, two and a half years old, and she's talking and... I talk to her and then I'm like, oh, this girl's like four years old, four and a half. My sister's like, no, she's only two. <laughs> and I'm like, it just blows my mind. I'm like, a two, I'm having a conversation with a two year old. That's crazy. Yeah. Is that a testament to how advanced she is or how dumb you are? Both. So you meet in the middle? Yeah. But like, she's the second child. And I always feel like the second child the picks smartest. up, picks up much more quicker than the first, develops quicker. I'm the second. There you go, man. I'm the baby. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so I'm always fascinated by two year olds cause I'm always like two, just two years. Yeah. That's pretty you know? nuts. Um, I mean, I'm not having deep philosophical conversations about life and you know, that's, save that for three. Yeah. I'm just talking about like, do you like this? Yeah. I like it. Do you not like this? No, I don't like this. Pretty much. Yes or no questions. She, she nails. Yeah. She'll give me like, um, can I watch TV or like whatever her show is in her blabber? And I'm like. Yeah, okay, I get what you... Like, you don't have to cry and point at something. I know you can tell me, you know, yeah. and she's at that stage. <sighs> Kids are annoying, though. Huh. But, uh, but yeah, our podcast can, like, walk and talk right now. It's pretty great. Yeah, I'm proud of... I'm the, proud of our podcast. Yeah. Um, But we have been talking about potentially starting, like, an exclusive... Oh, Patreon? Patreon account. So I set one up. I think yeah. it's going to be a work in progress and an evolving, also... It'll be based off of what our throngs of fans want. Obviously, yeah. you gotta listen. You gotta listen to the fans. Yeah, to dictate. Because we have some ideas of our own of the tiers and what we want to offer, but we also want to hear about what they want as well. Cause... Sure, like any massive corporation. Yeah, there's research and development, and then there's focus groups. Exactly. We may have a Fahiman or Dance Hour focus group. Maybe we'll have it at the Howard Hughes Center, <laughs> 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 and we'll go. Okay, by show of hands, who would like uh, an extra podcast a week? Okay, 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 hands down. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe write in to the podcast, he or at gmail.com. Yeah. Let us know what you might be interested in. I mean, I was setting it up so and wanted to do something easy off the bat. So right now, if you're – there's only one tier right now. Maybe we'll have different tiers or whatever. Yeah. But right now, it's just like one. And I thought, like, what can I do that's pretty easy right now? And it's just a more robust playlist. Because I do the one song a week, yeah. you know? We add the one song a week to the He-Man or Dance Hour Spotify playlist. But that's just one song a week. Mm-hmm. I'm coming through the crates, the digital crates every day, baby. That's true. And when I hear a gem, I add it to my playlist. But you're not privy to it. Ooh. I give you guys one jam a week. Yeah. But with this playlist, you would have access to basically any song I like throughout. It's just consistent. Throughout the day, music. I add it to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I already put one playlist out there. So that's the one that's available right now. It's like 20, 20 songs or. Oh, wow. So I think I'm going to do volume. So we have volume one. Once the next one gets up to like 20 songs, I'll do volume two. Okay. And maybe there, I, I'm trying to like play it out in my head. It might be like two playlists a month, two or three playlists a month. Yeah. So if you're like a big music head and you're just looking for another curated, I don't know, playlist or something. Yeah. If you're a fan of the playlist that we already do, this is just like a more in-depth version. Yeah. But it's like even if you don't care about music in general Mm -hmm. and you just kind of want to support the podcast, you can still you can do that anyway, you know, and the the music way to do it. The music bonus. Yeah. That way, if you hate the music, you don't have to listen to it. Yeah. 
but I think we'll have other things, maybe like discounts on merch and stuff in the future. Yeah. And then I might throw up just kind of like old sets or just thing media I had no home for. Maybe it's like I do a set and I like it, but it's not going to go into my final hour or anything. Just like yeah. B-sides. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the sandbox of Patreon and how it can be fun for me and, and you know, anyone who listens. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. And again, let us know if you guys have anything that you're curious or think might be a good idea just right into the pod okay all right well that's something that we've been um going back and forth with we've been trying to do our research as well what are what are people like yeah yeah what um, people do and but yeah it's, it's like you said it's a work in progress um yeah i had this uh i had this workshop tonight um i'm basically starting uh this new job next week uh for this uh, we were talking about it for this writer's room a mini writer's room for this like I can't really talk about it, but it's like a show, an animated show that will be coming out on one of the platforms, you know, uh, potentially. Is so, it a plus? Can you give us that much? Because you got Disney Plus, you it's got a max. Apple Plus. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a max. I like how your little detail <laughs> just gave everything away. I should just be like, I can't say too much. It's not a plus, it's a max. <laughs> Fuck. But that's all I can say. Honestly, so that just leaves two options. It's either HBO Max or it's Cinemax. And one is a comedy answer and yeah. one is more realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we'll leave it at that. Sure. Um, but anyway, so um, the the room is, and I want to know if you had this dilemma too. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, so the, yeah, the, the, um, the writer's room is in person and it'll be starting like in a week. Uh, you've been working from home, Zoom. You mm-hmm. said, you know, you already had to do one notch of like getting prepped and having like a appearance waist up sure. for the like Zoom Z- Zoom ready is very different than yeah. in-person ready. So now when you went back to like in-person meetings every day, mm-hmm. were you like, oh, I have to go shopping like I have to wear an outfit, a different outfit every day. Yeah, my closet's not crazy deep, so I've done several repeats by now. Okay, but that's the beauty of just like solid colors: mm. a black tee, a white tee. Yeah, no one. I could have multiples of those, and if you've got like a very unique design on a T-shirt, people are gonna know. <laughs> See, that's the problem with high-end fashion, or or just being really bold with your fashion yeah. choices is if you have a great piece, you only get to use it. The repeatability factor just isn't there. Yeah. Whereas if you dress in basics, yeah, no one knows what's up. Cause normally I usually do a uniform every year and I'll have multiple of the same outfit. Um, and I'll repeat that throughout every single day for however a year or so. But I, I do that. But when I'm in these new work environments, nobody knows. And I have to explain that, oh, I have. So if people just kind of meet me and they're like, oh, you wore that every day for the last week. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to be like, oh, well, uh, actually, have you heard of Albert Einstein? (laughs) I'm doing what he did. Yeah. Even though we're on different mental levels. I I mean. Arguably the same. I've never met the guy. (laughs) (laughs) You you never will. (laughs) So I can't ever judge, you know, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's a weird thing where you're like, well, for me, I'm like, oh man, now I have to go. Now I'm back in high school again. Literally. Like I'm in high school where I'm like, the rule was in high school and it might've been different uh, on the West coast, uh, Northwest, but it was like, you can't wear the same outfit. You can't repeat for two weeks. Mm. That was like the rule. You know, so is this unofficial. Yeah, it was like the unofficial. But does everyone know about this rule? Kind of. Yeah, it was like the unofficial. What would happen if you were with it? It was like you repeated one week out. Would you get clowned? Yeah. And if again, if it goes back to what you're saying, if it's a recognizable piece, then yeah, yeah. it's like a very specific Tommy Hilfiger shirt. Yeah. Or if you're wearing like a giant shirt with Dwayne the Rock Johnson's face on it and Stone Cold. Mm feuding and you wear that often people are gonna be like oh that guy you know i, I have 10 of them but you're just yeah. like a really poor kid yeah uh oh. there's this one guy in like seventh grade 
He used to wear this American flag, Kurt Angle. He was a wrestler as well, like mm-hmm. T-shirt, and everyone would be like, "That guy just all he does is wear that one shirt." Even though I'm sure he spaced it out. You it's know? a good shirt, though. Um, you know what's crazy? So what's funny is my brother turned me on to this series. It's on A and E. So A and E does biography, you know, mm-hmm. that TV series, and they have a whole slew of them on wrestlers. And so I've just been burning through those. They're really interesting. Well, okay, so what what biographies? Oh, uh, are... like Mick Foley. Oh, Mick Foley was one of them. Um, and then uh, who else? I think like Hulk Hogan. They they got it on everyone. Damn. What's interesting about? I don't know if I'm the only one who's made this observation, but are you you're a wrestling guy? I was, yeah. But I'm familiar with the world. Right. But this era that I'm telling you about, you'll be very familiar with it because it's right in your wheelhouse. Sure, sure. Mick yeah. Foley, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mankind. <clears throat> yeah. Mankind. It's also interesting watching these wrestling documentaries because you it's almost a microcosm for any facet of entertainment and art. Like when you become aware about a musician or a wrestler or a comedian or whatever, you see them in their like blossoming phase or they're, they're like fully formed pretty much. But biographies like this, and even the ones on the wrestlers, you see that there was like 17 iterations of these different wrestlers before they became mankind yeah, yeah. or the rock or stone cold. Yeah. They had all these other names and just these like gimmicks that just didn't work. Yeah. But it, you only know them as stone cold. You don't see these stumbles along the way or these yeah. like weird wrestling characters. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So that's just interesting to me. And like, even, I mean, I was thinking about this today too, like how humans just, we as consumers love packaging. Mm hmm. Like I was thinking about Bruno Mars and how they like his label couldn't figure him out forever. Oh, yeah, like yeah. he was doing ballad shit yeah. forever, pop stuff like pop very stuff, very poppy, like, like like Grenade. I mean, he did well with that. Yeah, but even before Grenade, like it was like lovey dovey sing songy, yeah. and just couldn't get it to work. And then now we know him as this soulful funk throwback guy, and that's like the packaging we or that's that's the Bruno Mars delivery system that we will allow or that we want or that just hits a vein. Yeah. Same with Katy Perry, like wasn't working. I think she was doing more like singer songwriter stuff. Yeah. Cause I was, um, like a while ago, I was, pitch- I was pitching that Lance show with Bill Lawrence back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah. And he brought up how, like he knew Katy Perry when she was like just doing shows at Largo. Oh my gosh. And like Zach Braff knew her and stuff. And, and just wasn't really wasn't really happening, and then she went this pop route, and it was a fucking explosion, mm. you know. Yeah. But again, it's one of those things of like, the packaging. Yeah. Like whatever that is, and that packaging just didn't match up. Yeah, I feel like for me, when I think about like an artist like that, the first one that comes to mind is Lana Del Rey. That yeah, that too. Yeah, because um, she was yeah very popsy, you know, uh, and then when she turned into very like, L.A. goth child, mm-hmm. you know, then it's like. Oh my God, who is she? Mm. You know, but yeah, no one knows or pays attention to these personas that they had before. And you have to find that brand, that image. Or even Lady Gaga, you know, like yeah. just singer, songwriter, piano. Yeah, yeah. And then had to do the Lady Gaga thing and then return to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just interesting. It's where like art meets commerce. Mm. You may be talented, but then what is the supply and demand? Yeah. That's interesting to me. Yeah. So the same is true in wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These wrestlers. Okay, so I got very, very off-roading. But you're this. watching these. So I'm watching these. I'm watching the Mick, the Mick Foley one. Yeah. And the way he talks, I'm watching his promos and stuff because I, I didn't grow up on wrestling. I knew of him. Yeah. But I wasn't I wasn't watching a lot of the stuff. So I'm watching it in the, in the biography. And Mick Foley would do these promos, and he does this voice. Like, you know his voice, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How would like do an impression of it? You know it better than I do. I can't do an impression. Right. It's like, Mick, or it's oh, the squealing. Yeah, okay, that, that, that. Yeah, that but very high with the I, Socko. Yeah, with yeah. Socko. But as I'm listening to it, I'm like, this sounds like Matt Foley. Yeah. The Chris Farley Van Down by a River guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the voices are so similar. Yeah. And Mick and Matt Foley, is that a coincidence? Or am I the only one who's, like, drawn this parallel? Yeah. Am I crazy? I don't know, man. Is this, like... Uh, what's it called? 
when it's like Bernstein or Bernstein bears. Oh, um, that uh, it's Mandela. Effect, Mandela effect. Yeah. Am I the Wait, only one who's who's like noticing this? It might not even be called Mandela effect. Maybe that's uh, the Mandela effect. Oh fuck. Mandalay effect. Mandalay. Mandela. The Mandalay industry. Holy effect. shit. How I, how deep does this go? <laughs> yeah. This podcast is over. Uh, yeah. I need to get to the bottom. I was actually, uh, I saw a, a little like video or TikTok about that. Uh, and they're talking about Tom Cruise's risky business where he comes sliding in the room mm. and he's in that uh, dress shirt. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, everyone has this idea that he slides in wearing sunglasses in a dress shirt with no pants on. And he, he was not wearing sunglasses, but all these like imitations that came up after him, everyone was wearing sunglasses. But Interesting. anyway, because in my mind, it was sunglasses. Yeah. For a second there right now, I yeah. just did something that I genuinely hate. What? On TikTok, because I'm on TikTok literally all day. Sure. For work and for to kill yeah. my life. Yeah. For work and play. Yeah. Um, there are these podcasts that are, are like coming up that are scripted, heavily scripted. Podcasts? Yeah. As if like when I say scripted, like they are reading off a script. And why would one do that to just give you like fun facts? People love trivia, okay, you know, yeah. and these podcasts, instead of looking at a camera and giving you trivia directly to the lens, it's like, let me give you Fahim trivia. In 1988, George Lucas met up with Francis Ford. Co and it's just like all this facts. Oh. And it's just delivered in a way where you're just like, oh, and I just did that right now. Talking about risky business. Like, did you know? In a risky business with Tom Cruise. Yeah. Well, we get a pass because it's not like two hours of that shit. Oh, yeah. And I don't know. How long can you do that for? Just straight up facts. Because I just see these like one minute TikTok clips. I'm like, is this one minute of like an hour? Mm. I don't know, man. I had a clip go pretty viral on TikTok recently. Oh, no way. Which one? It's such a crapshoot. The Y10s get cheated on bit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's doing really well. Oh, that's good, dude. It's interesting. Like, yeah. what takes off, what doesn't. Just that algorithm. You can't figure it out. Yeah, man. Sometimes, honestly, it just comes at the time of day. And that's the biggest factor. Sometimes it's like who interacts with it as quick as it gets uploaded. I don't know, man. Yeah. We'll, ne we'll never crack it. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep feeding it, though. Got yeah. Um, and the comedy store posted and it's doing pretty well on, on there too. Oh shit. Okay. That yeah, was a good, that's, yeah, man, that's a funny bit. You know, what's interesting about that bit though is like, I, I think it's like a really solid bit and it's like one of my favorites, but it was such a 50, 50 bit. Whereas like sometimes it would smash, mm. but then sometimes girls would get offended in the crowd or that's the thing about when you do, when you do stand up, it's like yeah. sometimes obviously I have a male point of view. Yeah. And when a, when a female's up there, she has a female point of view. Yeah. And sometimes you might do something that's funny, but it's through like a male lens. Mm -hmm. And it'll be very funny for like the guys in the room, obviously. Yeah. But then maybe the women will like it a little less. There'll be some, uh, but they might like it a little less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was one of those bits where it's just like, uh, it's there's like some truth to it. Um. I've noticed that it would always do really well in like a super super packed crowd, but if it's like a light crowd, yeah, it's one of those things of where like, like people, people don't know if they're allowed I, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was just such a fifty fifty bit where, because I'm working on the new hour, you know, mm -hmm. I'm working towards filming the new hour. That even though it's a great joke, it's just too volatile, it's too unpredictable to like put the brakes on the rest of my set. Yeah. So, it's not worth having in my hour, in case it kind of like it takes the air out of the momentum I've got going with all these other great, just sort of hundred percent bits that yeah. do well all the time, yeah, yeah. but it's still a great bit. So when I was doing La Jolla, I taped it and, and it just did really well on that show. And I happen to have it, have the footage and I'm like, all right, it did what I needed to do. I have it. Like I hit it. It like, they liked it, the crowd. Yeah. I've captured it so I can put it out there. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. There's this, there's this new delivery system, you know, like back in the day you had to, you had to do everything for the special or everything for the late night, but now you can just capture it on your own and put it on IG, TikTok, YouTube. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait for yeah, like the hour long precious thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these like B sides, like everything I'm releasing on Instagram and TikTok and stuff is just sort of B sides. Like I have my stuff that I want to do for my special, but these yeah. are just. 
It's a lot just, of content you're putting out there, though. It's a lot of co- which is great. You I know? guess so. I, that's the perk of like I write a lot. Mm-hmm. It's one of my strengths and one of my superpowers. And I mean, we've talked about this ad nauseum. Just when you kind of get overlooked by the industry. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and you're waiting for their pipe, for like the Netflix pipe or the HBO pipe and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And when you write a lot, it's kind of frustrating. And I, I just reached a breaking point where I'm like, I can't wait for that anymore. Yeah. And it's like, let me, let me just, let me fly. Cause it's even especially aggravating when you're waiting for so long and you just write so much. Mm. So I'm like, what am I, what, yeah, what, what am I you, holding on to this? Yeah. These, what am I, what, yeah. For these bits for. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very freeing and it's liberating. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're loving it. People hey, are thanks, loving it. Thanks, man. Thanks, dude. I mean, the people are, are have spoken. You know? And I'm just, I'm just sort of, because I come, when I started doing stand up, the, the paradigm was so different. It was, and I think, I mean, that'll never change because things evolve, media evolves, and all that stuff. But when I started, the, the blueprint was you get in, you, okay, you do stand up and then you do like a premium blend on Comedy Central, which is like a five minute set. Yeah. Or a seven minute set. Maybe you do a late night, like a Conan or a Tonight Show. And then you do a half hour on Comedy Central. Mm-hmm. You do a Comedy Central Presents. And and then you're on, you know? That was like the blueprint. Yeah. And then that just kind of like went away. Like then YouTube came along and every, I think everyone now is just embracing. IG, TikTok, YouTube, it's all about like clips. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. one's waiting for these outlets anymore. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um I w- did we ever <laughs> last week did we cover the Olympics? Did we Not talk? really. Uh, I feel like for, for we should cover it? No, I'm just saying like I'm so surprised that something that massive Does did anyone care? That's a thing. Does I anyone f- care anymore? I feel like no one gave a shit about the Summer Olympics. And there was just a lot of hype building up to it. You know, there's like the the dorm room beds, the cardboard beds, yeah, and the yeah. will they be able to fuck on these cardboard beds? Yeah, literally. Um, or the I like how every four years, like you guys, you guys know how much they fuck in the Olympic Village. <laughs> like everyone's blown away. Every yeah. yeah, they hand out a lot of condoms. I like, guess like these world class athletes are fucking a lot. They have hard bodies, and yeah. you've got discus throwers, fucking javelins, <laughs> javelin people. You got high jump people, fucking swimmers. Yeah. It just, this year, to me, I just feel like just overall, like no one really, no one really cared about the Olympics because I didn't really see much. Do you think it's because like there was no audience? Was there an audience or was very minimal? It was minimal. Yeah. Uh, Who knows, man? I'm I'm surprised it even happened. You know, Um, it was one of those things where people were like, should it even happen? I think it's hard to get behind anything during a pandemic really yeah. right yeah like what's the last major well world cup was pretty big yeah i think people care about that even americans somehow end up caring about the world cup mm-hmm. uh when did the world cup happen was it already passed yeah. i shouldn't be asking yeah. it passed yeah um have okay this year i found out something i got into something interesting mm. I feel like it's a very like douchey bro thing to get into. Right up my alley, dude. Yeah. Uh, Hold on, let me get my backwards hat. All right, shoot. You ready, Chad? <laughs> yeah, what's up, dude? Crypto. Crypto. Now you're talking my language. And I you don't. You talking Doge? You talking? Uh, yeah. So hold to... up. You talking Bitcoin? You talking Ethereum? Ethereum Lite? You talking Litecoin? There you go, man. All of them. All of them. Okay, all of the yeah. above. Sweet. To uh, you to do our... Coinbase? You do Robinhood or? Robin what do you, you use Weeble? Right now, Weeble doesn't let you get like fractions of coins. Oh, or, you do frax? Yeah, I do frax. Oh, I do. I do whole. Do whole? You, I do whole. You have a whole coin? Yeah, I don't. I don't like fractions, so I do. It's like hard for me to wrap my head around. I don't mm. do fractions. Okay, I just do holes. Oh wow, that's that's yeah, it's a lot of money, man. It's a lot of money, yeah. Yeah, but um, I you know, and to our listeners who don't give a fuck about crypto, I don't want to get into like the nitty gritty of it, but I just no, wanna, you can get into the nitty gritty. I I just the phenomenal of like what happened in the beginning of the year, mm. you know, with Doge and um, like all the altcoins that kind of came out. There was like a time in uh, like late March, early April and into May that like that shit skyrocket. Like there was like a boom, 
or as they call it uh, that I've learned. Dude, I bought my longboard off of Doge. Yeah. Yeah, I cashed out. Damn. I got a longboard. You you bro, you you banked it, man. I banked it. Yeah. I knew how, when to get out. How how much was that longboard? It was like 20 bucks. Holy shit, dude. You got I came out ahead. You got out right at right at the I have top. a lot of friends who lost their shirt on Doge. They didn't know when to get out. Yeah, yeah. They tried to go to the moon. They landed that rocket ship crashed yeah man. crashed yeah and there's some like so many little scam coins that came out you know and i think it was interesting because like up until like march i didn't know shit about shit crypto sure. yeah i mean i bought like in the in the like january when everyone was talking about like doge yeah i got some when it was on reddit and just i'm like yeah all right this seems fun yeah i, I want to be part of the party exactly so Not i have a ton of money but i put some into yeah, it yeah i was on robin hood i signed up and i was like all right this is during the whole amc doge yeah. everything that i was I still, like i still have some amc or gamestop mm, i didn't do gamestop oh, okay, okay. AMC. so i was like all right let me just like buy this doge shit it's like at the time it was four cents so i was yeah. like let me just toss 50 bucks into this and then, like, over a few months, like, the 50 jumped to, like, $400. I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm like, if you're telling me if I were to put $1,000 in, you know, like, what could it, you know? So then I got into that headspace of, like, if I put in this much and it doubles or triples, like, what it did. Yeah. And then so I just started dumping money into, like, random coins. I don't know if that's the healthiest I've, thing to do. You know, um, I was trying to look up it, videos. It, on it was not... Uh, yeah, like it, Warren Buffett talking about crypto. Yeah. He hates it. Yeah, he's not a fan of crypto. Yeah, it's but the, he's been wrong on some other things. It was one of those things that um, I just realized I, that for, initially when I start dumping in money, like it start tripling and doubling, and I was like, oh. I'm going to be the next crypto king. Sure. Again, this is like a week that I've like discovered this nonsense. I need you know? like a grand off of Doge. But then, I mean, it's not that anymore. Yeah, no, same. And I was like, well, what if I initially put in a grand? I could have made like five grand. I mean, that's it's it's like it. A part of it's like a gamble, you know. Yeah. And I still don't understand. I I don't understand. I can't explain crypto to anyone. Yeah, I can't they're explain like, anything really. Yeah, if they're like, uh, what's what's blockchain? I don't know. Dude, the fuck? you just there's like an algorithm and. It takes a computer resources and energy to like do the algorithm. And then when it does it, you get a Bitcoin. It's not that hard. Yeah. And if you string a lot of computers, then they're doing it in parallel. And it's a very specific blockchain that it has to go through. And then <laughs> you it, just use the word in the definition yeah, blockchain. And then you get a Bitcoin. Yeah. So if you get a lot of computers and you have it doing blockchain, you're going to make a lot of Bitcoin. It's very simple. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. You, I mean, you just. Yes, because the blockchain practice. is hard to figure out. And so it takes computing power to figure out the blockchain. The blockchain, yeah. And it and it does it. Yeah. And then, you know, Ethereum has a different blockchain. Mm. And again, you use computers. Yeah. And the computers figure it out. Yeah. With through encryption and such. Mm -hmm. And it unlocks it in they're in block they're in the un, uh, they unblock the chain. They unblock the chain. Yeah. And that is in your Coinbase which you can access via password or... And it just like bits the coins. It's just like... Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, it's it's very simple. I think I laid it out pretty clearly right there. You laid it out, man. One plus one equals two right there. Yeah, it's binary. Yeah, binary. That's it. Algorithms. Algorithm. Block. I feel like all if you just say blockchain and algorithm, people... Then people tune out. Yeah. It's sort of like when I would get into Ubers and they would say, what, what do you do? And I would say... I'm an engineer, and then they would stop asking questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. You say you're a comedian once in an Uber, oh, and, and you realize part, never yeah. again. Yeah, the entire conversation, the entire ride, it's just like... Because it's like going into an Uber and saying you're an astronaut. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? there's just so many it's questions. It's just such a fucking weird profession that they don't... like. It's like saying I'm a unicorn or something. <laughs> Not to toot my own profession or whatever, yeah. but it's like... It is kind of off the grid yeah of sorts yeah yeah yeah. so there's going to be a lot of questions because it is fascinating i mean it, it's, uh, this is almost a callback to what you referenced last podcast 
where so many people you know are like, yeah, yeah but what's like, what does he real, do? Yeah, yeah, what what's does his real job? Really do? What does he do during the day? And I'm yeah, like, yeah. He's Be- a comedian. Because I mean, this is why it took so long for my dad to kind of get behind. Yeah. My comedy career is because he can't wrap his head around something as ethereal as comedian. Mm-hmm. But me driving to Warner Brothers and like getting a banana from the break room or whatever, he knows what that is. Yeah. He knows what sitting in a chair for eight hours is. Yeah, yeah. He knows what a coffee machine is. That that feels real. Everything else doesn't. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, I perform at night at clubs in L.A. And then I, I fly to a comedy club in different states and perform on the weekend there. And then I come back. And then sometimes I'll act in a thing or it just sounds made up. Yeah. The trouble with comedian is like anyone can just, there's really no vetting process. It's, it's all like, it's all oral history and oral vetting for where you really are mm-hmm. in the game. Yeah. Cause anyone can just say they're a comedian. Like a homeless person could That's tomorrow true. just say I'm a stand-up comedian. Yeah. I've, I and mean, technically we're both right. Yeah. Even, <laughs> yeah. In, even in the film world, anyone with a DSLR point and shoots like, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a director. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not wrong. And they, everyone that anyone with a phone, yeah. And now everyone is a comedian as well. This you is know, true. Uh, it's a very, it, uh, what's the word? It's a, it's a like self-employed title, to an extent, because you give it to yourself. Yeah. You know. Uh, you know what I had? I mean, I was driving home today from Warner Brothers, and I just had this thought just about Hollywood. That like the entire town, especially when you're younger and stuff. But this this entire town is predicated and built on uh, delusion and, oh, and desperation. A hundred percent. Like I could put a Craigslist out tomorrow. Just say, need actors for ten hour shoot, willing to pay two dollars. Yeah. And a slice of pizza. Yeah. I will get like seventeen thousand legit emails. Yeah. With people's headshot attached. Yeah. Saying, please pick me. Yeah, yeah. That's ten hours of like free labor. It could even be crew. Just be like, need PA for yeah. low bu- uh, SAG, ultra 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 low budget, for SAG ultra no budget <laughs> production. Willing to pay five dollars. Uh, yeah, I've that's for thirty six hours of work. Yeah, no sleeping on the job. <laughs> Again, so many. Oh help. Yeah. I'm trying to build my portfolio, just trying to work with like-minded individuals. So many people that just get that have just gotten off the bus in LA, metaphorically a bus. Sure. You know, like they've just arrived and they're like, I need to find something or someone. Yeah. It's a beacon. Yes. Yeah. But for real, I could put that Craigslist out and there'd be so many people no, who, yeah. who want that. That's the sad reality of it. And then also I think everyone has this dream in in hollywood to like you know to make it and such yeah that no one wants to say uh why don't you get like that that's like such a taboo thing out here like like why don't you give up or whatever oh yeah so everyone has this pact kind of amongst each other in hollywood where it's like no one ever says that to anybody (laughs) because it's so it's like it's like models getting a fight and yeah. punching each other in the face. You yeah. just don't do that. You don't, yeah. Below the neck. So anybody in the arts just knows like, you never say they should quit, they should give up, or you never say to someone's face, like, uh, what was the phrase that I did? It was like, like hey, maybe yeah, you should give up or something. Maybe you should just think about... Yes, because it's a house of cards and everyone's has these fragile... Yeah. Because it's a f- fragile thing. To, so everyone keeps themselves going by never saying that to each other, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's not until you travel outside of... LA that that's what everyone every everywhere outside of LA is thinking yeah if you go back to your hometown or whatever the subtext is like what are you doing yeah why don't you give up yeah you know but in LA it's like this protective bubble like no one dare say that to each other yeah and it's a very interesting thing because every individual that I would ever like give this uh, advice to Right when you come out to LA, everyone moves out at some point to LA to pursue this and like dream of entertainment. You need to tell yourself, you need to give yourself a clock. 
you need to give yourself a like if nothing is popping off by like four years five years you need to like Mm -hmm. do something man you know like how long i know people that have been here for like 10 years that just are still responding to these craigslist ads Mm -hmm. you know and i just want to some individuals i know are actually like legit living out of their cars and i'm like at a certain point you gotta realize that this is just and you don't want to be that guy to tell someone like hey you're not the same for you this is not for you you know like no one wants to be that guy Well, you would hope that the person at some point could like piece it together themselves or want something different for their lives. Yeah. Cause everyone feels like they're just like right around the corner. Dude, I had this other thought too. Like it's almost better. Like it's worse to be the person who books a commercial like every three years or something. Yeah. Because you're, you're getting strung along with hope. Yeah. So intermittently. Yeah. That it keeps you, in the game longer yeah whereas if you if you just like got nothing for years yeah you'd be more inclined to like pivot Mm -hmm. but it's the sporadic work if it happens in like such um long intervals yeah that person's almost been fucked yeah by getting those pops like every five years or something yeah yeah i don't know but every everyone's different everyone wants different things too yeah some people are content in that and I feel like the big nail in the coffin for anybody in this creative entertainment industry is relationships. Mm-hmm. Like the second someone gets married, it's like, boom, that final nail in the coffin. Like if you were struggling before and you weren't booking anything or you weren't getting any gigs or you weren't shooting or acting, the second you get married, that like from what I've witnessed of people I know, yeah, it's like if it wasn't working then, now your life is real. Like it's shit is real now. Yeah. And you are starting this new chapter in your life where you need to bring in some kind of income Mm -hmm. and this like, uh, hope and dream of you living out this fantasy. It's over. Yeah. To quote Martin Lawrence and bad boys. Shit just got real. Shit just got real. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. There's a timing element to some of these life events, you know, like it's possible for the relationship and getting married and all that stuff. But it's like, you need to hit it at a certain time. Yeah. Like hopefully you have your ducks in a row or you've built the foundation for whatever you're trying to chase. And like, now you can turn the key a little bit, Mm. but there are, there are exceptions to the rule where you do find a special someone and they help you and are value added and very understanding of what you do and are accommodating. And you're kind of a team. Yeah. But there are so many instances where, that person just drags on you and is like, why are you doing no, trying yeah. to pull you out? Yeah. Uh, and on top of that, you know, uh, unless your partner's like, Hey, keep doing what you're doing. I will be the breadwinner of this family. Then at that point, you know, you've got a good, Oh yeah. Um, but more, more, than, uh, I don't know what I'm saying, but, um, more likely than not, it's not the case, mm. you know, anyway, cause I've seen, way too many of like these individuals I know who are out here trying to like become writers or directors or actors or cinematographers or editors and whatever. And they're struggling and they're struggling and they're struggling. Then they find love. (laughs) (laughs) This is supposed to be a happy ending. And then you're just like painting it to be the, you know, then they find love and they're fucked honestly though that's the like you know their heart is full and they have a (laughs) smile on their face but they're fucked yeah they're never gonna get another imdb credit yeah man uh, okay so i i say this because when you're single and you have no one in your like no responsibilities or anything to another individual you can take risks you can take risks where you're like i'm gonna lose money on this project but it's gonna like open something you know or i can do this and it's not paid and i can i could take these risks yeah and you know um and it it could pay off or it 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 won't but when you're in a relationship those risks are like grand risks you know where you're like hey i know we're saving up for a house and you know uh this down payment i'm gonna put towards this project and 
we might lose it all, you know, like <laughs> yeah. that's, not, you know, yeah, she's not going to fly. Yeah. That's not going to fly. With her. Um, so, cause I've seen that and you know, people just end up doing other, other things. And it's, it's heartbreaking. Cause I'm like, Oh, that person had something like they could have, they had like that talent, but you know, uh, but also like we're starting at the same level. So it's like, I can't help them out. Cause I'm like, I have not, I can't help myself out, you know, let alone help another person out um so like seeing them go i'm like oh man you know have fun being in love (laughs) have fun being in love (laughs) but conversely i know that we're like poo-pooing this person who just like gave it up for love or whatever yeah (laughs) but you don't want to push it so far as well on the other end though. Like, yeah. like, like there's a, there's a window where that makes sense. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, early twenties yeah. and yeah. you want to be able to take risks and, yeah. and be nimble. Yeah. Like that is an asset when you're trying to build your life and your career. Yeah. Uh, but you can like, I've always had this thought that in Hollywood and stuff, it's like, there's two routes to go. Eventually, what do you hear some shit? I hear music. I thought it was coming downstairs, but it's the neighbors. Like a car is driving by. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whenever I hear music like that, I go, those must be renters. <laughs> People who own don't blare music like that when they come home in their cars. Mr. Warner Brothers over here. Renters blare music when they come home. Yeah, homeowners don't. Homeowners know better. Yeah. They res- homeowners are considerate. They respect the HOA. They respect the HOA. Yeah. So, ye- oh yeah. So there's two routes to go. If you're like in entertainment or whatever. At a certain point, do you choose to become like a regular guy? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like a regular human, or do you? Are you Hollywood guy mm. for the rest of your life? Yeah, yeah. You know, regular guys like eventually gets married, has yeah. kids, yeah, yeah, does the human thing, yeah. Hollywood guy just keeps it keeps it going yeah forever the Leo the Leonardo DiCaprio lifestyle but the thing is like Leo sounds cool because he's Leo he's Leo when you're not Leo and you're doing that yeah it's it's kind it's not it's it's a little sad yeah it's a little pathetic um yeah Leo reached the end of the chessboard yeah so they could do whatever yeah society can handle Um, that but if you're just like some rando doing that yeah I I don't know it's um Cause I, I, on the other hand, I do have friends that have gotten married at a young age in Hollywood, in Los Angeles, pursuing entertainment writing and, or directing or whatever development. And they've thrived, you know, we have a few friends Mm -hmm. that, that have done well, but those are like the outliers, you know? Um, and some people are just so incredibly talented that they can cut through the years of bullshit and, you know, with the, with the side of luck and opportunity, you know? And, um, yeah, no, at a certain point, you obviously do want to be a normal individual, but I feel like you have to be able to have that comfort where you're like, I can do this now, you know, like, yeah, you you have that comfort of like a some kind of like, the the ch- the 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 chase the race has slowed down a bit. Yeah, because you know, um, you've gotten the accolades or the credits or the experience where you don't have. Because like starting off in this writers' room thing, I was doing this workshop because it's starting next week. They're like, these individuals are uh that are like like yeah, I just finished school i just finished film school and i'm like god damn man like usually you start uh in a writer's room and you're like mid 20s and i'm in my early 30s now and i'm like well and then there's this other individual that was way older than they're pushing like late 40s and i'm like well there's no time there's no like right time but also like you don't want to spend because there are individuals that are like i've been doing this i've been a assistant to an agent's assistant or a writer's uh an assistant to the writer for like four years i'm like holy shit four years yeah like i don't have that time to you know to do that you know uh there's an art to knowing when to like eject or seat out of a position like when you've used it yeah because there is this bend when you're you've been there for too long yeah yeah and that and that also goes into the 
being able to know when it's not working out and to eject at that time too. And you have to have that like timeline for yourself to be like, Hey, I gave this LA thing a shot and ejecto cedo in the words of fast and too fast and furious. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know where, where that tangent went. Um, I mean, it just sounds like we're trying to get everyone to like quit and like leave Hollywood, but that's not the case. Well, just don't fall in love. At, at such an early point of at an early stage of your career that's all that's my two yeah cents. yeah it's interesting people are built differently you know yeah some people just love to fall in love yeah they're just very susceptible to it like i'm just like so logical where it's like there is an element of that but you then i, I need to have these things in a row as yeah. well like otherwise it's just it's like it's too much of an emotional reaction yeah and yeah yeah because i mean if you look at it the other way Francis Ford Coppola, the guy who wrote and directed The Godfather 1, 2, and 3, and Apocalypse Now. I was reading like I was uh, reading this book that he uh, did, or um, The Godfather Notebook, or his an interview. He was like, advice to young filmmakers is get married. His advice was to get married, because once you get married, you're like, holy shit, I need to... A baby's on its way. I got to mm. be able to like provide this and that. So you're going to start hustling. Yeah. And you're going to start writing. I it's mean, it's like create the whole. Yeah. And he was this incredibly talented writer, you know, that graduated from USC and et cetera, you know, or UCLA. I think he was USC. And he was regardless, like he's incredibly ta- talented, had these opportunities to like skyrocket, you know? Yeah. Not everyone's a Francis Ford Coppola. So, um, I don't know, man. That's just, um, that's my, that's my, uh, I don't know how we got into this. Yeah, I don't know either. But I mean, I get, I get it to some degree because I am having like a shadow of that just when it comes to time because mm. I have this deficit of time now Yeah. with, with the job. And I feel like I've been productive Yeah. because I've, it's created this stress, like not like in a bad way, but when you have all the free time in the world, there's like no pressure or stress. But when you have limited time, mm-hmm. I just feel it's like it's great for product productivity. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Cause nothing's wasted. Yeah. When I, um, like back in my college days, when I was like working full time, part of like these youth group things at my local masjid and, um, working, yeah, working, going to school, like actor, like I just had so many things packed where I, I was doing the best at school. I was doing the best at work because I was like, I only have like four hours to study and get my shit done. I have no time to like screw around. I need to get it done within this allocated time. And then, you know, like we were talking about last week, when you're so busy and your your, your schedule's packed, like you said, you're giving your best at everything, you know, the best version of yourself at every aspect, you know? And, um, and I've noticed when I am, incredibly busy as exhausting as it is it's like you're more productive but also like you're doing the best that you've done but i also don't want to be out here promoting grind culture you know hustle rise and grind and what sets you on fire yeah gary v think about your family and then think about the shit yeah fucking sets you on fire uh oh yeah so i mean i forgot to mention this i got to do largo for the first time oh so i've done it twice now Wow. But I like that was one one venue that I hadn't been able to crack since I'd been in L.A. I've been in L.A. for a long time. You know, I've done like all the venues I've done. UCB, I've done, you know, I'm at Laugh Factory, Improv, Comedy Store. I'm like at all the clubs. Yeah. But Largo. Are you familiar with Largo? No, I've never been. It's like this great venue. It's on. I think it's on La Cienega. Mm hmm. Yeah. But it's like this really cool, I guess it, um, like I passed by it, but I've never, oh yeah. Like been. a lot of great music acts play there. It's it's very like, it's like indie and like alt. Yeah. It's very cool kid. Yeah. Okay. And I was just like, never, I never had an in there. Interesting. I was just never a cool enough kid. Were you a meltdown guy? Meltdown? Sometimes I played okay. meltdown. So you did meltdown as well. Yeah. I would do meltdown. Okay. 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 I saw Kumail the other day. Oh, no way. Yeah. I was at, I was having, um, dinner with, uh, these friends of mine were this outdoor patio place. And then I saw Emily, which is Kumail's wife yeah. and, and Kumail, oh. they were eating a the table over there. And then 
they came in over and said hello. Yeah, that's sweet. And man. that's really cool. Like, there's this brotherhood amongst comedians and stuff. Because, like, Kumail's this huge star now. You know, yeah. he's going to be in that Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah. The Eternals. Yeah, that's right. And for him to, like, walk over and say hello. Yeah, it's nice, man. Yeah, they, you know, it's like, at the end of the day, we're still stand-ups and comedians. And, mm-hmm. and Emily wrote the episode that I was on Carmichael's show. Oh, oh So shit. she was a writer on that show. Okay. And then she would also produce Meltdown as well. Okay, okay. Because it was Kumail and Jonah Ray, they would yeah, host they Meltdown. Yeah, they would be the host, yeah. And then Emily would book at a certain point, and then she handed that over. But she was always at Meltdown as well. Yeah, yeah. So I know them from Meltdown initially, and then and then the Kumail did the Lance doc. Remember? That's right, yeah. We did. We filmed that at, at I forgot, Meltdown. I forgot that he did that. Yeah. yeah. We oh, fi- yeah, you were there, huh? Yeah, yeah, we filmed it at the... Uh, Meltdown, at Meltdown. The Green Room. Yeah, the Green yeah, Room. yeah, 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 yeah. And the... Uh, the AC was broken, but <laughs> he remember. was still cool enough yeah. to like do it and talk yeah, about Lance. He's like stuff. literally drenched he's in sweat. Dr- and every, everyone in the comments was like, why is Kumail so sweaty? <laughs> I felt so bad because he, he did us a solid. Yeah. He literally came right off stage, mic'd him up and we're like, all right, improv. Yeah. 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 And he was so great at it. Uh, but the AC is broken and he's sweaty. Yeah. And just everyone in the comments was like, why is Kumail so sweaty? <laughs> and he's just doing us a solid. Yeah. So. So anyways, uh, so Largo. Yeah, Largo. I would just it was I would just never be able to play there. And I would have friends that I know at the comedy store and 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 like they would get to do it sometimes, like people who slanted a little more alt. Okay. And I'm like oh, like Mary Lynn Rice Cub. Oh yeah, like yeah. I yeah. know her really well. Like we're friends from the comedy store. She was Chloe in twenty four guys. She was also, also in the Landstock. Also in the Landstock. Yeah. Also in the new movie, The Tomorrow War on Amazon Prime with Chris Pratt. Awesome. Um But I always see pictures and stuff and be like, Oh man, I wish I wish I could play Largo sometime, but I just, you can't force the issue. You can't push it. Yeah. It'll happen when it happens or maybe it never does. Who knows? So, so it was always like my white whale. Yeah. And then I get hit up by JP, Pu- JP Buck who books Conan. So mm-hmm. he, he's booked me on Conan. Yeah. Like two times. And I just know from the comedy scene and, and before the pandemic, I was starting to do more Conan stuff like team Coco shows at the Irv- like not Irvine, but the Hollywood improv. I did yeah, a team yeah. Coco show. I did one in K-Town, you know, the Hayworth? Yeah. Up and up. So I did a Team Coco thing there. And then, dude, like the last cool thing before the pandemic hit, I did the All-Star Weekend Team That's Coco right. show in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. It was it was dope. And so he's like, oh, we haven't done any Team Coco stuff since the pandemic. We're doing our first one at Largo. Mm-hmm. Do you want to do it? Oh, that's amazing. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. I go, Man, I've been trying to play Largo forever. <laughs> I go, this is perfect. Yeah. So I go to Largo and he's like, Hey, what's up? I say hi to him. And then I meet the owner of Largo. His name's Flanny. Yeah. And he's like, he's this Irish dude. And he's like, uh, oh hey, yeah, thanks for doing Largo and all this stuff. And you know, I was talking to Mark Marin and and then uh, he was speaking very highly of you. Oh, and, sure. uh, he 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 said you got to get Fahim on the because he was doing some show. Yeah. So he, he wants you to do his show. Can you do that? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's just amazing. so weird that this place that I was just so out of reach for me. Yeah. Seemingly out of reach. I go there to do Team Coco show. And as soon as I meet the guy, I'm like booked to do Martin Yeah. Mar- it's just weird how the world works that That's way. That's amazing. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, I could do that date for sure. So I got to do Largo. And then some time passed. And then I did Mark Maron's show. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun, too. So I don't know, maybe I'll get to do more. Hopefully, like man. the guy took my number and stuff and maybe I'll get to do more shows there. Yeah. But I, I'm a cool kid now. There man. you go, man. You've been in all the scenes. I'm in all the scenes. Yeah. I'm the, I'm a club kid. The I'm alt an scene. alt kid. And you're in the in between. I'm the in between. Yeah. I'm the blade of comedy. <laughs> I'm the Swiss Army knife of comedy, baby. Yeah. I just I just like jokes. And I got people, no agenda. I just want to make people laugh. That's all that Um Oh yeah, what's my a oh, mind fuck too is just like I guess Mark Marin like likes my comedy. <laughs> That's amazing, man. Yeah, it was really cool. It's been this snowball thing because I guess the way the comedy store is now, it's a little different. It's a different energy. Yeah. Just because the landscape's a bit different post pandemic, you know, because like Joe's not there. He's in he's in Austin yeah. and like so it's it's all it's just like a different vibe. It's interesting. And then Mark. Like I would seem in passing, but it was just such a hub and there were so many bodies passing and yeah. 
it was just so easy to get lost in the shuffle. But now people are watching more shows and stuff, even comics sticking around. So Mark Maron caught one of my, I didn't know, I didn't even know he saw my entire set in the main room. Oh, okay. But then I saw him in the hallway afterwards and he was like complimentary and stuff. Oh, shit. And, and then we became friendly because I did this podcast did back podcast. in the day. Yeah, 2018. But but part of me when I did it, I don't know like how much he really knew about me. Was he doing it just to do? Because you got to fill up and maybe yeah. you have a booker or something. So, yeah. But he did do his homework and he knew things about me when I did do the podcast. Yeah. And, and it was a fun one. I really enjoy That's like one of the one of my favorite ones that I've done is the one with him. But you never know like how invested they really are in you as the person. Like, mm-hmm. is it just for the pod? Yeah. But it wasn't until like as of recently at the store, do you kind of like get to know, or did it a little solidify the relationship a little more, mm-hmm. a little more beyond the surface, I guess. Yeah. Because yeah. now we'll chat, we'll hang, you know, we'll chop it up, and yeah, yeah, it's like a different level. And then being asked to do his show was even better. Yeah. And then after I, well, he brought me up. He was like, "This is like one of the best com- the comics, one of the best comics working." Oh right shit! Right now, <laughs> yeah, just like so. Um, now that's amazing. Yeah, and then when I got off, he's like, "He makes, he makes me laugh every time." <laughs> yeah, it's such a mind fuck to me because yeah. like, you think of Marcus as guy who doesn't like a lot of yeah, because his persona his is persona, like yeah, or yeah. he's built his brand as being <laughs> like very particular. Yeah, he him and Kumail like very publicly have gotten into it. You know? Oh, really? I don't know that. So, because uh, he talks about this on, I listen, I literally religiously listened to his podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, he went on meltdown. He went to meltdown, mm-hmm. and he, uh, you know, and it's Kumel's show, and he just starts ragging on Kumel, like just joking. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, it just kind of rubbed Kumel the wrong way, and then uh, they kind of like clash. But over time, they were able to like squash it. Yeah, uh, and he talks about it, but then every time he talks about like how him and somebody else got into it you know him and james franco i mean like fuck james franco now but like at the time when james franco was james franco they got into it as well on stage once and uh like there's just so many accounts of like mark Marin and like like i hated this guy and then then it's like now i've i've apologized and we've made amends <laughs> and like every other episode's like me and so-and-so apologized <laughs> and you know we're, we're good now you know hey man i'm just i'm just happy to be on the good side yeah so so yeah no for him to be like yo you're funny you make me laugh and that you know he's showing love that's like yeah like it's always cool when someone says that but like especially because mark is particular yeah like, that means a lot and also neil you know oh yeah yeah i just like people who are very Established, yeah. establish and don't give it up a lot. Yeah, it's just extra special to me. Yeah, and also like when wait staff. Mm. Whenever I get that compliment, because I'll do the road sometimes. Yeah, and whenever the wait staff is very complimentary, I I take that more than anything oh, else yeah. because they watch so much comedy. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're in there all day, multiple shows a yeah, night. Yeah, they're you know? bored as fuck. They know all the tricks. Yeah, they've seen it all. Yeah, yeah. So when you can tell that like they really like it, oh I'm that's like, oh yeah. Fuck yeah, a waitress compliment. No, that's real though. That's real though. Yeah. Um. Well, okay. That's been that's been a quite the productive week, man. Yeah, dude. Um, and I have a job. What? How? How are you pulling? This how off? do I do it? Yeah. Um. This this last week has been interesting. I've uh, I attended two funerals, two burials. Oh no. This week. I'm sorry, dude. Oh man, no. Thank you. Uh, it's a, it's interesting though. Like. There's something calming about a burial, even though like it's very emotional for the families. Mm-hmm. Um, one was like my friend's dad who passed away um, due to COVID, and one was my uh, my uncle, my mom's brother. But like me and him, were, like various, he was like the estranged uncle that we never saw. Like the last time I saw this guy, like five years ago, I, I he was at a wedding. I approached him and he looked at me and in Farsi, he says, which one are you? I said, like, which one of the, so I was like, that says a lot about our relationship where he can't even recognize me. Um, but anyway, so at these, have you, have you like attended a few funerals yeah. before burials and yeah. stuff in the past? I don't know. I feel like there's something very grounding about being there, mm-hmm. you know, cause the whole, it's like a very crude experience, you know, like you put a body in the ground in the coffin you know 
someone that was like alive just a few hours ago, maybe like 48 hours ago, 72 hours ago, this person was alive and well, and but now they're literally in a box and dirt is being thrown on them. Mm-hmm. And there's just something where you're just like, damn. And you look around at the graveyard and you just see like, as far as your eye can see, graves on graves on graves. Yeah. And it's like anyone that's ever lived, that you know, died, like, like this is in a rare occurrence. Yeah. This and, has happened and will happen. Yeah. And it's just like, well, we're going to, it's just a matter of time where someone's going to be one of us, you know, mm-hmm. um, that almost helps me though, give perspective and the way that I approach yeah. life. This thing happened. I don't know. I like to call it like nihilistic optimism. Mm-hmm. That's sort of how I would characterize my philosophy, philosophy towards that. Yeah. And as I walk through life yeah. is knowing that is the eventuality. Sometimes people get stressed and make a mountain out of a molehill and just yeah. like, but in the back of my head, I'm like, we're all going to die. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> just like in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Uh, and not in like a dreadful way. Yeah. Like what's the point in like fall into a depression, but yeah. more like in the grand scheme of things, this isn't as important yeah. as it feels in this moment right now. Yeah. If you could pull back in a macro sense, mm-hmm. And pull yourself out of whatever this downward spiral is, or whatever you're stressing about currently. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. That's just the way. No, I, I, and and I think it's that aspect, and also, uh yeah, because I mean, like everything's just so temporary, and we, and the thing is, everyone that like each of these individuals that I, like I went to in this like literally in like it was like a three four day uh spread um everyone had plans for the next week you know mm-hmm. no one thought that like they wouldn't have next week um and it just it, like life just comes quick you know or like the end of life well that's that's why i never want i never wanted and i never want to live for tomorrow interesting interesting you know what i mean so i mean your approach to things how so like when you say that Uh, say you're working some job that you really don't like or whatever and you're just like looking at the clock Mm. and you're waiting for it to end yeah so that your life can start or waiting for the weekend yeah so that you can feel yeah (laughs) you know it makes sense just like that perpetual state of that yeah uh doesn't seem enjoyable or healthy Mm. it depends on to what degree you don't like it because i think there are different degrees as to how you approach having a job yeah perfect world you're working a job you absolutely love and you make good money and that's that's like the best case scenario yeah the one tier below that is you work a job that you you aren't like in love with, but you don't mind it, and yeah. it gives you thing the things that you enjoy. So it's like a lot of money or free time yeah. or so, and it's that's that's still a win as well. Yeah. But this I'm talking about the step below those two. Mm. So if you're living for tomorrow, and then, yeah. then you got to get out of that. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. I used to uh, the multiple jobs, and I used to try to be when I tried my life in politics. Friday would come around. And I'd be for had like an hour of excitement or maybe even 30 minutes of like, oh, the day's over, the weekend begins. And then as I'm walking to the train station in D.C., I'm thinking, fuck, I have to be back here on Monday. Yeah. And that, like that feeling, I remember being like, I don't want to feel this. I don't want to. But I felt like, you know, you got to pay your dues. You got to go through this. You got to live this life. And it's, it's okay if you're building towards something. Yeah. But some people just fall in that for and, and they don't try to like dig their way out of jail yeah they just accept it this and, is and what you it's blink and be. it's 30 years yeah you know yeah 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 so I, just have that exit strategy yeah because um, tomorrow is not guaranteed no yeah definitely and i feel like one thing i also picked up on on like because like i remember a, a friend of mine i you you, you remember her in fire 
years ago, she asked me like, what would you do right now if your parents died? Like tonight. And I'm like, I mean, like my first thought is like logistics, like how we got to transport the body from here, wherever they passed away to like a mortuary. And then, you know, from there to a funeral home, like you got to get the burial site mm -hmm. ready. You got to get the word out to family and friends. Hey, the burial's on this day. Then it's like, all right, after the burial, everyone comes to someone's house and pays their respect. The fuck yeah. There's so many things with food, catering. We got to get chairs. Dozens of people are going to come over. We got to get chairs enough to, for people. To, there, I'm like, my mind goes straight into logistics. Yeah. You know, and like the practicality of like death, you know. Um, and the the, the first, uh, my uncle's funeral, like, uh, what was it? Today's one. Uh, literally a week ago. It was like seven days ago. Um. With that, like we all were thinking about like, okay, we got to like book flights for the family. We got to get an Airbnb, got to get a rental car. We got to do this. And then, okay, now we're there in uh, San Diego. It's like, all right, now we got to figure out um, the the logistics of the burial process, you know? And I think, and, and I made, made a note in my notes, like as I'm sitting there being like, you can't be sentimental during death, you know? Cause my, my, cousins or my cousin was like no we want the grave to be close to our house so we can go visit but i'm like i get that but you're gonna be paying like 10 grand for this mm -hmm. grave but if we drive like 35 minutes down the road you're gonna be paying like three grand for that plot of land you know and at a certain point you just can't be unfortunately sentimental about death you know um but yeah death is uh it's a weird thing because like it also brings people together, you know, like family comes together during funerals. And I mean, and that's the point. That's like the, the comfort in family and stuff. Have you ever done like hospital visits and stuff with like family members or friends and like everyone just spends time in a hospital? Uh, not really. It's, it's a very similar thing where you're there for a very sad reason. Mm-hmm. So and so's like an accident or like uh, cancer or whatever it is. They're at the end of their rope or you're at a funeral. If someone passed away, you're there at these places for the like for heartbreaking reasons. Yeah. But everyone that shows up, you're like the silver lining of yeah, yeah family being there. Um, like I felt bad. There are times where like like all my cousins were there, and we're like hanging out like two a.m. and we're just like I haven't laughed that hard in like a year mm -hmm. and i'm just like and we're all trying to like muffle or laugh so like no one hears yeah because it's like oh they're like the circumstances in which you are brought together yeah we can't be we can't be laughing during this you know uh but yeah no death uh I, i've always found death fascinating you know and especially like in the islamic faith like we wash the body like i've never washed a dead body you know mm -hmm. i was given the option like do you want to come with us we're gonna go wash the body i was like not this time, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, how do you be nice about that? Yeah, I was like, well, the, yeah. I, I was like, ah, I'll let the person, I'll let someone else take the, you know, there's only limited spaces and someone that's closer to, uh, yeah, yeah. again, last time this man saw me, he asked me which one Which I one am. are you? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, that was, uh, anyways. Anyways, that was a, a, a week, man. Whew, what a week. Um, two in one week. Yeah. But um, speaking of death, did you listen to Donda? No, but I know that it finally dropped. Yeah, it dropped like yesterday or something. Yesterday or today. Yeah. It just wasn't. Oh, you listened to it? Yeah, man. I, what's I what's mean, Ali Baluja's Donda take? Is it Donda or Donda? Donda. After Donda. Her, named after his mom who Donda. passed away. Donda West. Um, the guy knows how to release an album, though. Yeah, he does. He um, he, It's not good. <laughs> okay that's i can't say anything but it's almost like there are so many things attached to it now yeah where it's like it's beyond the music now it's almost like the releasing the not releasing and the listening parties yeah the multiple it, it, it's, release it's, uh, yeah it's, listening parties it's about everything but the music at this point yeah. at this point yeah it could just be 17 tracks of farts yeah and people at this point would just be like brilliant it's just a spectacle yeah. and, and you can tell a lot of effort went into this album, but there's 27 fucking tracks. 20, the album runs for almost two hours. Mm. And I'm just like, each, and I'm, I got through like the first hour and I was like, 
does it get better in the second half? And it does. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and it does. Yeah. The second portion, the last half of the album is good. But there's no like stronger Jesus Walks, Gold Dick. There's no like standout track where you're like, ah, oh, man. I love this album, this song, you know? Um, I mean, I got to listen to it now. Yeah. To I don't either mean, agree or to tell you you're an idiot. If you love gospel music, oh, this is it heavy gospel. He's he's going through his uh, religious phase, his gospel phase. He, like his last album was Jesus is King. Yeah. Was there speculation that he was doing the gospel thing to like get the fans back after? After the Trump? Yeah. No. Or is it that slavery was an option? Yeah, I feel slavery is a choice. Quote yeah, or whatever. yeah. I mean, that whole era was was, was a disaster. Um, I think uh, no, because I feel like you'd be playing into that religious fan base with the music. You know, mm-hmm. if you made political music like he did in the you know in his early years, then that'd be winning back his his people. But his people as in his fan base. I save. <laughs> not, not a race. It's I'm gonna, not. I'm going to chop that up. Your, your career's over, dude. Damn. It ended over with the Fahim and Ward Dan Tower at uh, yeah, talking about Kanye. It's just a hatchet job. Yeah. Do we have anything in the mailbag? You know, the mailbag's very fresh. So, yeah. Like, there hasn't, we, because we just dropped the audio version. Yeah. And we haven't had time. Well, the people don't even know that we're back. Mm. So, you got you to gotta wait. Yeah, you gotta wait for it to hit their ears, and then we'll get some more. Yeah, but there might yeah. be some stragglers that I didn't hit last time. Yeah. Oh, did you watch this fight? Did you watch the Jake Paul and? No, nah, he lost. He won. Jake Paul won. Split decision for real. Yeah. Whoa. He got I... rocked. If you look at the stats, he got. I didn't watch it. Are I... you saying boxing's dirty? I think these YouTuber things. It's getting out of hand. This guy, his brother fought Mayweather. Yeah. Like what the fuck? I love this new era of boxing where it's like Tazon Day versus <laughs> Kamalo Alvarez or yeah. something. Yeah. No. Yeah. Or you're like in a League of Legends team. Yeah. And you're just fighting John Jones. It's That's not... the new thing. We want to see like a like a fighter in his prime. Yeah. Versus an esports player or just someone in the digital digital realm. Yeah. The, I mean, so it, like it, Rebecca it, Black versus Ronda Rousey or something. It would be great if the fighters dished it out you know these individuals get punched but that's the that's the extent of it i i want like a beat down hmm. you know you want to watch a, a ninja you know ninja type guy get the shit kicked out of him by like you know uh i don't know uh tito Tito Ortiz. Ortiz. <laughs> you, you, know? you went to the archives for that one. I had to think of a fighter, and I'm like, I don't know any fighters. Uh, you know, you want to see, like, guys like uh, fucking, you know, uh, PewDiePie get strangled out by Habib, you know? Uh, so, I mean, was it kind of an even fight or no? I don't know. Beats me, man. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even Yo, know. The, are the Paul brothers just legit? No, dude. Like, you watch the fights. They don't have, like, the technique or the form or, you know, um, they just, they learn boxing within the last year or two. And, you know, now they are they can say anyone's name and fight them because they know they'll have the audience. And at the end of the day, it's a business, you know? Mm. Well, I did read one thing that was kind of cool about it because he draws so much attention. Yeah. Instead of getting a huger payout for himself, he made sure everyone on the card got a the I biggest did. payday that they've ever gotten. I, I did read that. I did read that. But so as much as he gets shit on for kind of just like, who you know, not being a real boxer or something. Yeah. The attention and the spike that boxing gets when they are on the bill. Yeah. Who would have thought that uh, Jake Paul's out here reading Karl Marx and becoming a, a communist? <laughs> Yo, who knew? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's good for our health. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Or it's, is it even healthy for um, boxing? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. This looks like an ad. Is it salubrious for us? I don't know. Who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, is this? Uh, are you pulling up a song? Are you pulling up a uh, something from the mailbag from months ago? Let's see. Maybe mailbag. I think we hit it, man. There's no stragglers. Okay. 
All right. Well, guys, write it into the pod. He man or dancer at gmail.com. Ask us a question. Let us know what's up. And let us know your thoughts on uh, Patreon. Yeah, what you would like to see in there. If you if you have any ideas, yeah. rate, review, comment, thumbs up, five star it. All of that. All that jazz. Um, subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube. YouTube channel. I'm going to put stand-up clips on there. Yeah. I'm going to put, you know, the podcast obviously comes out on there. Yeah. Clips. Let's get that YouTube channel going. Let's get that YouTube channel going, guys. Yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. Jam. Yeah, what are we? Uh, we give them a tasty jam. What are we dancing out to, guys? You're getting one jam, but if you have if you, if you have a dance hour plus, oh, if you, you're getting a lot of jam. How much is this dance hour plus? You know, just five dollars a month. That's not bad. That's for all the music you're getting for being the life of the party. I'm about to like drive home right now and pick up food, and that's going to be less than bro my in and out. You get it. Yeah. All right, this song, guys is called It's Like a Dream by Neil Francis. Big fan of it. You can find that in the Fahim Anwar Dancer Spotify playlist. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. Dance.